red camera. Long range opticals now uh, show a dot of light, which will uh, gradually increase to the shape of a uh, space shuttle orbiter named Challenger. Challenger, re-entering the Earth's atmosphere in an orbit that brought the crew over Fort St. John, Cold Lake, Winnipeg, and down the Florida coast. Velocity now 1,800 feet per second. In one hour, the orbiter's speed dropped from 28,000 kilometers an hour to 320. 30 nautical miles to touchdown. You believe he's coming down? At Mission Control Houston, Mark Garneau's brother, Philippe, a reporter here, watched. Come on home, baby. This was only the second time in 13 flights the shuttle had been able to land at Kennedy. That reduces the turnaround time and means it can go up again sooner. Commander Bob Crippen making his fourth perfect landing. <laughs> Mission Control Houston at eight days, five hours, 24 minutes. The largest crew in the history of space flight is home. Houston Challenger, we're well stop. Challenger Houston, uh, we copy that crip and you outfoxed us again. You landed at KSC, but the beer has been sent to Edwards. I don't believe it. Don't believe it. A half hour wait. The shuttle is inspected. NASA's flight surgeon checks the crew, and then they're out. And the first Canadian into space is back on Earth. For me, that was uh, the voyage of a lifetime. It, it was an incredible odyssey. Uh, all eight days up there were uh, just uh, jam-packed with exciting experiences. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt about it. It's everything you could ever imagine it to be. And uh, although we had a lot of work to do, we also had a great deal of, uh, of fun. And uh, what can be more fun than sticking your head through one of the windows and just looking at the Earth? It's, uh, it's just an incredible sight. This evening, Garneau flew to Houston, where NASA will debrief him for five days. Then he takes a holiday, and in about two weeks, Mark Garneau comes home to Canada. Eve Savory, CBC News at the Johnson Space Center.